The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man named Lazarus who was ill. He lived in Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother was ill, was the woman who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sisters sent this message to him, Lord, your dear friend is ill. When Jesus heard it, he said, This illness will not end in death. It has come for the glory of God, so that through it the Son of God may be glorified. Though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then he said to his disciples, Let's go back to Judea. But Rabbi, the Jews there were recently wanting to stone you. You're not going back there again, are you? Aren't there 12 hours of daylight? If anyone walks in the daylight, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of this world. But when anyone walks at night, he stumbles because the light fails him. Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going to awaken him. Lord, if he has only fallen asleep, he will surely recover. Jesus had been speaking about his death, but they thought he meant resting in physical sleep. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad that I wasn't there. For now, you will believe. Let us go to him. Thomas, called a twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let's go too, so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him while Mary stayed at home. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask God, he will grant you. Your brother will rise again. I know that he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here and asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet arrived in the village, but was still where Martha had met him. When the Jews, who were in the house consoling Mary, saw her get up and leave, they followed her, thinking she was going to the tomb to weep there. Mary went to Jesus, and when she saw him, fell at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my father, brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had accompanied her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and was deeply moved. Where have you laid him? Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how much he loved him? But some of them said, Couldn't this man who opened the eyes of a blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus again sighed deeply and went over to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone covered the opening. Take away the stone. Lord, by now there will be an odor. He has been dead four days. Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you will always listen to me. But I said this for the sake of the people standing around me, 
so they may believe that you sent me. Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Well, walk on, Bethany Lutheran. Walk on. walk on. Nothing will separate us. So it was uh, spring break this week. I've been keeping up with a lot of people, many of you on Facebook, uh, and many of you have gone someplace warm, so good for you. <laughs> the Golas were in Florida on a cruise. Uh, I've been seeing many pictures from them. One of our Bethany youth went to Spain. I saw some Bethany members who were out in D.C. and New York City. One of our members, uh, Steve Young, was in France this week. So, of course, Kirsten, Isaac, and I spent the week in our basement. <laughs> so, for us, it's been an HGTV kind of spring break in our home. Not so much uh, MTV spring break, but more for us, rehab addict or fixer-upper. If you've been reading the Wednesday Words, you might already know this, that Kirsten and I have been remodeling our basement, not because we wanted to, of course, but because we were forced to do it. This is also something that I mentioned in a sermon way back in November. So if you remember that one, A, you get a gold star, good job, and B, consider this part two of our basement saga. Uh, I'll start from the beginning, though, because I know that some of you haven't heard the story. About five months ago, we had two window wells outside of our house. They filled up to the brim during a rainstorm. It was the night the Cubs won the World Series. So a little good luck, bad luck going on that day for us. Uh, but when one of the seals around the window broke, water started pouring into our basement all over our fairly new carpet. And we found out later that water was also coming in through some cracks in the walls as well. So those of you who have dealt with basements and water issues before, you already know where this story is going to end. We ended up having to gut the entire basement. We had to rip out all that carpet. We had to tear down most of the walls in the basement. We had guys coming in with jackhammers, literally breaking up our floor and tearing uh, and waterproofing the walls. And by the end, the basement, as we knew it, was just gone. And it was actually kind of tragic for Kirsten and I. We, um, you know, we really loved that basement, and Isaac loved playing down there. Uh, but it had become this concrete desert, a stone tomb for our furniture, which, was which is still wrapped up in plastic to protect it from all the dust. But slowly, resurrection came. Slowly, piece by piece, we started to get things back in order. The concrete uh, floors got patched. The walls were put back up. Leaks were plugged. And then that brings us to our spring break of 2017, which has featured Kirsten and I spending every nap time and every evening painting walls and uh, hammering in floorboards. Uh, it has featured a lot of bruised knees and general crabbiness as well, mostly on my part, never on Kirsten's part, never on Kirsten's part. But as we've slowly put things back together, We've decided, like, we've looked around and, and, at, at the work that we've done, and we've decided, we, you know, we're actually kind of proud of it, of all the things that we've done. Our, our basement doesn't really look the same as it did before. It's the same basement, but it's been transformed. I mean, we picked different colors to put up on the walls. We replaced the carpet with a waterproof vinyl. Behind the walls, things are more secure and stronger as well. The leaks were patched, and there was a better system installed to keep our basement dry. And it really became this whole, we gave new life to our basement through this process. But to get to that point of putting things back together again, first we had to tear it all down. It had to get thrown out. It had to get gutted. It first had to die. 
And so I, I began to wonder this week about the resurrected Lazarus. Specifically, I was wondering, what happened to Lazarus after he came back? What, what happened to him after he came back to life? I think it must have changed him in some ways. In John's Gospel, there are actually only two more mentions of Lazarus after our reading. The first was that after he was raised, he, he ate supper with Jesus and Mary and Martha. But the second thing that John tells us that I thought was kind of interesting and kind of funny is that the chief priests plotted to have Lazarus killed after Jesus rose him from the grave. And I kind of find that to have some kind of beautiful irony in it. I mean, imagine being dead for four days only to find out now that after you've been brought back to life, people just want to kill you again. However, there's a part of me that thinks that despite this, that despite these intentions on the part of the chief priests and the Pharisees, that I don't think it would have bothered Lazarus. I mean, because Lazarus, above all others, would know that death is nothing to fear. Knowing the depths of God's love and compassion that reached him all the way to the grave, I doubt Lazarus would even flinch about thinking about his own death a second time. Death and resurrection, I think, would have changed Lazarus. The Lazarus who went into the tomb would have come back new and stronger and renewed. He came back remade. But even more than resurrection, I think this story is about having faith in the power of God's love to put us back together again. To put us, to bring our broken pieces back into the wholeness of God. And I think that that becomes most true for us in baptism. I mean, most often when we talk about baptism, we, we talk about the happy side of it. We talk about the resurrection side of baptism and, and the love and the family of God. But you know, the first part of our theology surrounding baptism is that when, when we enter the waters of baptism, that there's a kind of death that takes place. One of my seminary professors would call it our first death. And it connects us to the death of Jesus. This first death, it rips down our walls. It gives you a blank slate, like a concrete basement. It's a place where God is going to raise up something new altogether. And so when you came up out of the waters of baptism, something new had been born in you. From the outside, it looked the same, but on the inside, God had gathered up all those broken pieces inside of you, and God made you anew. And God continues to do this with you day by day and little by little, paint one fresh coat of paint at a time, one plank of wood at a time. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when we say that nothing will separate us from the love of God, we mean that very literally. Neither death nor life, nor broken basements, nor broken hearts, nor addiction, nor war, nor hatred, nor violence, nor racism, nor bigotry, nor anything else in all creation can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And we know this because you have already had a first death. And God has already brought you back to life. And so into this new life we say, walk on Bethany Lutheran. Walk on. Walk on. Nothing will separate us.